There are many gods and goddesses in the Norse pantheon, but the primary ones were Odin, Thor, Loki, Baldur, Frigg, Freya, Freyr, and Jorur, who received the primary attention in the sagas and the Eddas. The sagas and Eddas are literary works written in Iceland in the 13th and 14th centuries that tell the stories of Norse mythology. The world of Norse mythology encompasses the time from the beginning of the world until its end in the flames of Ragnarok, which would lead to the birth of a new world that maintained the order established by the old gods at the beginning of time. It is possible that in the original version there was no rebirth, only the end of all things, encouraging adherents to appreciate the time they had in a world which, like themselves, was doomed from its inception. This understanding could have developed, however, even if the concept of rebirth was part of the pre-Christian story of Ragnarok, in that whatever new world came next, it was not the one which people had known. Those living in the Viking Age recognized that they were already in the end times, as the first herald of Ragnarok, the death of the god Baldur, had already happened and the world was progressing daily towards its end. Norse pagan belief may have actually been more inclusive if not actually syncretistic, meaning that it allowed the amalgamation of religions. They recognized parallels between their local gods and those that they were exposed to through their travels or through the arrival of merchants and Christian missionaries to their homeland. There was a tradition of comparison in which the Christian Lord appears at first as just one more deity of the sky and they were able to allow a foreign deity to be brought into their pantheon. They often practiced burial, burying their dead with a wide variety of funerary objects. A ship, real or symbolic, was often associated with the grave to carry a deceased person on his or her spiritual journey. Unfortunately for archaeologists, the advent of Christianity put an end to burial with goods, but the Vikings continued to bury piles of gold and silver. Christianity advanced in Scandinavia for a variety of reasons, including the missionary efforts of priests and the political ambitions of kings. Denmark was converted under King Harald Bluetooth in 980 AD. Norway was converted with the help of Anglo-Saxon missionaries in the 11th and 12th centuries, and Sweden finally at the end of the 12th. The Vikings were also known for their famous rune stones, which were basically Viking gravestones with inscriptions in runes, which is what they called their writing system. The historical origins of the runes came from the days when the Germanic war bands raided people living south of them in present-day Italy. The Germanic war bands would have brought back the alphabet from those raids. It is commonly believed that the runic alphabet is derived from the Greek alphabet, although scholars debate whether the runes were derived from an old Italic alphabet or perhaps from an Etruscan script. The runic alphabet had a strong pressure on vertical lines because the verticality made it easy to carve them clearly in stone. The tradition of raising stones which had runic inscriptions first appeared in the 4th and 5th centuries in Norway and Sweden, and these early rune stones were usually placed next to graves. Over 3,000 rune stones are located in Scandinavia, most rune stones were erected during the period from 950 to 1100 AD, and then they were mostly raised in Sweden and to a lesser degree in Denmark and Norway. This is a quote from ancient Viking literature. For men of consequence a mound shall be raised to their memory, and for all other warriors who had been distinguished for manhood a standing stone, a custom that remained long after Odin's time. A famous runestone was raised in honor of King Harold's conversion to Christianity, with Christ on one side in a picture that mixes both the Christian crucifixion story and the Norse legend of a mythical tree of Yggdrasil, an immense and central sacred tree in Norse cosmology. This famous stone is called the Yelling Stone, and it's a crucial example of the Mammon style in Viking art, which we'll discuss in the next video. Many chieftains and powerful Norse clans consciously tried to imitate King Harald, and from Denmark a runestone wave spread northwards through Sweden. Now to turn to another famous element of Viking culture, the longship. Perhaps the Vikings' greatest achievement, whose ingenuity and efficiency almost transformed it into an art form. The constant presence of the sea turned them into superb sailors. Longboats were shallow but agile, and could move around easily on the seas and shallow freshwater rivers. Each end was designed similarly, which minimized the effort of ever needing to turn a boat around. 
It is generally believed that the Vikings did tattoo themselves. We know for a fact that the Rus did, as the Arab traveler Ahmed ibn Fadlan described the Vikings that he encountered in Russia in the 10th century as dark from the tips of their toes to the tops of their necks, with pictures of trees and the like in green ink. Stay tuned for part three, where I'll discuss Viking art. <laughs>